guys, what's up? I hope you're doing well. You guys really seem to enjoy my last impromptu how I prepare my foods video. And you said you want to see more videos on how I make the various veggies and produce items that I share in my grocery haul. So I'm just gonna, again, film some, you know, impromptu weeknight dinners that I whip up with, with all of my grocery, grocery items. Specifically, you all wanted to see how I prepare spaghetti squash in my sweet little Bella air fryer. So I am about to do that and I'll show you guys. Uh, the way I do it is I just take an entire um, spaghetti squash and I'm going to first make some little puncture perforations around the skin. And then I put it in the microwave actually for a few minutes to soften the rind and then I will cut it in half on the longitudinal axis. So I just kind of perforate around the longitudinal axis where I am envisioning cutting it. Just makes it easier when it comes out of the microwave to cut it. You don't have to do this stuff. If you have a really sharp knife, super excellent butchering skills, you, you should be fine. But I just do this to soften the rind. So I'm just gonna put it in my microwave for, I don't know, three or five, three or four minutes on high to soften the rind. All right, so my squash came out of the microwave after five minutes on high, and so the rind is going to be soft enough for me to easily cut into, just to cut it in half here. And I go ahead and cut off the, the top with the stem. There's not really any any substance in that that you would want to eat. <laughs> so that can go to your composting pile if you have one. All right, so once you cut it in half, the squash is still raw. I go ahead and remove the seeds at this point. And the reason I do that is I find that they separate from the meat of the squash more cleanly in a more clean, even manner than if I wait till the squash is cooked. Um, I just use a spoon. Oops. And I try and not dump them out all over my clean counter. You guys always ask why I put down towels all the time. It's because I don't like to get uh, food residues on my countertops. <laughs> it just keeps my counters cleaner and makes for easier cleanup. So long as I don't go spilling things all over the place, which I often do. <laughs> You can also uh, cook the seeds if you like, bake them. I don't do that. Admittedly, I send them to the waste. I've never had great success preparing squash seeds or pumpkin seeds, but you don't have to do a perfect job. Just the seeds themselves, they come out in a, a pretty large, a pretty large conglomerate. And I go ahead and remove, I'm only going to cook one half of the squash for um, tonight. Only one half will fit into my little air fryer. And then I save the other half. I just wrap the other half up in some tin foil and I store it in the refrigerator and prepare it once I make my way through the first half. But I do go ahead and remove the seeds from both halves at once at once. Alright, next 
I next I cover both halves in aluminum foil. The reason you want to, to cover the, um, this half in aluminum foil is it prevents it from drying out and as it's in the air fryer, it nicely steam cooks a little bit, um, a little bit more so than if you didn't do that. But you can see that this one half of my squash fits perfectly into, into the base of my air fryer. And so, in she goes. And I will put that at 375 degrees for 30 minutes, except <laughs> I'll plug it in first. How about we do that? Somehow, <laughs> just the soothing sound of the timer alone does not quite do it. All right, now let's try again. <laughs> Take her to 30 minutes. And yeah, I'll just let that bake. <laughs> Uh, convec convection bake, if you will, for 30 minutes at 375 degrees. And once the timer goes off, I just allow it to kind of cool a little bit in there because it's quite hot. And then I take it out, I remove the foil, and then I let it come to, to cool finger touch, so it's cool to touch. And then I, I string her out, and I'll show you that once we get there. But this is the other half of the squash. I'm going to wrap it up in aluminum foil just as I did that piece. Uh, I don't know how long it will last in the fridge that way. I typically cook it three nights after slicing like this. So it does just fine that way. All right, so while my spaghetti squash is cooking away, I go ahead and assemble. Tonight I'm gonna be making a mushroom, uh, a rich hearty mushroom soup. Uh, it's kind of like a reminiscent of, I don't know, maybe a stroganoff, but with a little Korean kick. I love this uh, gochujang that I get on Amazon, actually. It is vegan uh, and pretty low in sodium and not too bad as far as sugar. So I like this. It's got a pretty good spice to it, and I think it's pretty acceptable. Koreans, comment below your experience though. I am, I am uh, not as experienced <laughs> with different varieties. And then I like to give it a little bit of extra smokiness by adding this smoked paprika. It's a uh, wonderful frontier co-op, can't go wrong. So I make a mushroom, a mushroom kind of gravy, and I'll show you guys how I do that. I make it in the Ninja, and then I add it to the Kosari. But before I do that, I go ahead and chop up the vegetables that I'm going to also put in. Uh, two ribs of celery, some yellow onion, I've got a turnip here, <laughs> um, some cauliflower, and red bell pepper. I'm not gonna add the whole red bell pepper. I'm just gonna do half a red bell pepper and I'll save the rest for later.
right, so I've chopped up all of my vegetables that are going to be slow cooked in this stew. <laughs> there is the um, turnip, which I cubed into small cubes. Uh, the cauliflower, you saw I chop up the stems into small cubes and then just kind of uh, rough chop up the florets. Um, how about a third of a red bell pepper cubed up or diced up and uh, the onion as well and two ribs of celery and then I also do because this is like a mushroom hearty gravy I also go ahead and put in these dried uh, mushrooms you guys see me buy at Costco although they've stopped carrying them at my Costco so this may be the end of these for me but you can also get dried um, mushrooms on iHerb that are equally good um, but this mix has been really good. If you guys have it in your Costco in your area, totally should snag it. I have not tried this recipe with uh, fresh mushrooms. I've only done it with dry mushrooms, so I can't comment as to how that would come out. I imagine probably it would be okay. Um, so yes, the, that all goes in there just as is, and um, I'm going to make the gravy, which is essentially the liquid this will slow cook in. To make the mushroom gravy, I first am going to just peel these, uh, what do I have here? Four large bulbs of garlic. <laughs> this this, this uh, for one person is giving further evidence as to my incredibly narrow uh, social circle. <laughs> this, the no deodorant, the no using body soap, um, yeah, uh, so I go ahead and peel those and everything I make for the gravy, I just puree in the little ninja, ninja bullet. Uh, and then I'm going to add my gochujang, the smoked paprika, some water. Um, and then I didn't mention this. This is the main ingredient. Actually, this is uh, chickpea flour. Chickpea flour, if you're not familiar, is just chickpeas that have been pulverized into a flour. It is a wonderful gluten-free alternative to flours in most recipes, uh, particularly savory recipes, recipes that require flour for gravies, thickeners. I, whatever your dietary habits are, uh, try, try garbanzo, chickpea flour, garbanzo bean flour, basan. Uh, you can, I, I don't think you can get it on iHerb, but if you have Kroger in your area, they sell it. Uh, the Simple Truth brand makes one. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm gonna be using. It's just like, the only ingredient is chickpeas. So one serving for me is going to be a quarter of a cup. That's the equivalent of one serving of chickpeas. So this duels as, as your protein in, your protein and your thickener in this recipe. together the ingredients for the spicy chickpea gravy um, but you may have noticed that I put a little bit of the water in to the ninja um, cup before putting the flour in and the reason is is that this flour absorbs a lot of water all at once and if you put the flour in first and then put the water in on top it uh, kind of mashes down and, and gets stuck stuck in the the narrower part of the top of the of the cup and just is harder to harder to mix up. So I add a little bit of water first, then the then the chickpea flour, then uh, most of the water and the spices, puree it, and then the remaining water I put in the empty cup to kind of rinse it out and add back to the kosari. Hopefully that was clear to you all. Uh, so I have so I have the broth in here and all the veggies and I'm just gonna put this on the slow cooker setting. I might actually add a quarter of a cup more of liquid just so that it's just so that it covers covers all the veggies with liquid. 
but you can see how that chickpea flour the sun really absorbs a lot of a lot of liquid so um it's just like just as if uh when you cook beans from dry you know how they absorb a lot of the cooking water same principle with the flour all right so i got all of my ingredients in there and plenty of liquid. There are some veggies that are not completely covered, but that's okay. They are gonna get mushy and cook down and soften. And uh, so I've got plenty of water in there. I've got two and a quarter cups of water with everything. I'm just gonna put the slow cooker lid on and I'm just gonna set it on slow cooker. This is normal medium, which is 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This will run for six hours, and after the six hour runtime, if I were not here, it would just default to keep warm. But I will end up running this for approximately two hours before eating it, but it would be done and delicious at an hour and a half to two hours. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit start. I'm gonna go to the gym. Um, while I'm in the gym, this, uh, my spaghetti squash just finished. It's hot in there, so it will cool in, in there. And then when I come out of the gym, it will be completely cool and I'll be able to string it out into the bowl and I'll show you guys that. All right, so I just got done at the gym. I, uh, was in the gym for about, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes. And the squash is cool enough that I can handle it without burning my fingertips. Please be careful, <laughs> let it cool thoroughly. And if you've never seen this in action before, it's really cool. This basically pulls out of the uh, shell of the squash like, like spaghetti. So there you go, you can see it pulls right out. So I'm just gonna get the last few strings out of the shell here. And you know, you can put this in your compost pile if you like. And then I will top the top this off with the uh, mushroom veggie gravy, which is slow co cooking down here. All right, so my spicy chickpea uh, veggie, I don't know, stroganoff on spaghetti squash noodles is done. And to go along with the uh, gochujang spice, I just topped it with a little bit of this spicy kimchi by King, King's Brand. You guys uh, affirm that this one was indeed vegan, as, as the ingredient, ingredients appear. FYI, you can get this at, um, at Walmart, by the way. And it's pretty good. It's uh, not the best kimchi I've ever had, but uh, it's, it's good. I know you guys like... Uh, your mother-in-laws or whatever that is, that one is that they sell at Whole Foods, but this one's pretty good. King's Korean marinated cabbage kimchi. Um, so yeah, I just put a little bit of that and I drizzled a little of the pickling sauce, uh, the the marinade on on top as well for some probiotic judge. But yeah, looks delicious. The mushrooms get nice and soft. They're not too chewy, and the veggies nicely flavor everything. It is really really good. So I'm gonna enjoy that.